Here's a video on how to make an abstract painting using a variety of techniques. So what I've started with is I found an old painting. It was a student work. They never collected it. So teachers just take all those old works. And I'm just covering the whole thing with gesso first. Abstract painting should be gestural, should be loose, and it shouldn't be muddy. Now that we got this layer on gesso going on, got rid of the painting which was there, I'm just going to start grabbing some colors. And of course, you know, you're going to want to make paintings that fit what you're doing. Just blobbing that paint right on there. I want to work quick because I want to use that gesso in the painting. See now right there we got a bad mix. We got blue and blue and red. They don't make the prettiest purple. So we're gonna kind of try to keep those separate. Just gonna clean my brush. And we know that red and yellow make a nice orange when they mix, so I'm not really too worried about those two. And we're not too worried about, this is just a background, but we want to get some color on the canvas because that white of the canvas tends to make things look really unfinished. Just working fast here, covering everything up. Now we're going to wait for this to dry and we'll be back with part two. I'm using acrylic paint so it should take about I don't know, probably, I got some thick areas there. So probably around 15, 20 minutes to dry. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's start putting some paint into our cups here. You're gonna wanna use paint, you know, if you're interested in uh, harmonizing with something in your room. You can use a different selection of paint. I'm just gonna use the three primaries and then I don't know, let's put in a, how about a purple? Purple and purple. Okay. Hate autofocus. All right, so I've got some different things. This is wood glue right here. Let's put some wood glue in this one and in this one. Here I've got this thing here called Floetrol. You can buy that at Home Depot. And what this does is it helps level paint. And we're gonna mix all these up. The goal of this is to get some different effects happening by using different materials that might kind of fight each other. It's not a bad thing if they fight each other. So now we've got some different colors, different consistencies of paint, and we're ready to go to step two, or three. So now we bring in some other tools. This is a dust pan, as you can see. 
And we're just gonna make some little piles here. Doesn't matter if you get stuff mixed up. The glue and the flow trial should help keep all the colors separate. This one's really watery. Then I'm just gonna take a fork. And mess this up a little bit. Now we're just gonna dump this on. Here's where the magic happens. So here I've just got a piece of cardboard and I can use that to very carefully kind of make these things a little bit bigger. and we'll let this dry. So now we've got some pretty interesting effects going on, but it's kind of all over the place, and we want things to be um, more solidified and uh, kind of have more of a sense of um, structure in the painting. So we're gonna use an element of design, which is called the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds simply means you cut your canvas into three parts. You can also do it this part, this way, and then you put interesting stuff here. When you're, you know, looking at photographs, often you'll see, you know, there's a horizon line there and a sun there. We kind of like these types of compositions when stuff is divided into thirds. So we're going to divide this canvas up into thirds as well. And this is about the third. I've got a little bit of this red left and let's just make a splash with that red. And then on this third, we'll make a splash with the yellow. Let this dry and we'll get back to the next step. So now we wanna kinda of differentiate some areas. A lot of abstract painting is about layers and seeing through different layers and stuff like that. So I just took some gesso and added some water to it. So you can see it's kinda of watery. And we're just going to create autofocus is not my friend. We're just going to create kind of a ghost layer. We can still see through it, but it does change the painting a little bit. The more layers, the more interesting the painting. I'm picking up a little bit of that color, but I don't care. Okay, now that we've got the gesso on, we can come back with a little bit of ink. It's just black ink here. I'm gonna try to make some more structure in this work. Kind of playing with the edges. This kind of helps solidify it a little bit more too. And it gives the eye somewhere to rest. You know, one common mistake is that we want to put stuff everywhere, but it's good just to have areas rest. 
Give the eye a place to relax. Got a little bit of this pink it left over here too. And I'm gonna put some big areas of pink here. As well. Let's give it a nice little splatter. Give it more of that spontaneous look. And there you've got it. An abstract painting that's fit for hanging on the wall that has some solidification, it has some structure, but it also retains that nice gestural quality uh, that we all love in painting. Now what I recommend doing is figuring out which way you actually want this. Maybe it's better that way. Maybe you want it this way. Maybe you want it that way. So put it on the wall and then you can play around with which direction you want to hang it and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like.